we need to have that information. Leslie, uh, you paused there for me to interject. Uh, I, I've had countless scientists, doctors on, some of them are in your film, and I understand you're trying to be sound reasonable here and uh, measured, but I have talked personally on air to more than 500 over the years and to hundreds on the street. Every time I'm on vacation or something, there's an autistic child sitting there you know, in the pool, and I'll say, hey, do you mind me asking, when did your son become uh, autistic? Uh, 18 months. He was running around talking, totally happy, got the third round of shots, had a convulsion in the station wagon driving home. Uh, I know they used to arrest people till this came out when they would take the shot and they would collapse, sometimes in the hospital. They'd say, oh, you must have beaten them. They had blood on the brain because of an autoimmune response. They knew full well what they were doing. Uh, th they know. They know. that. The, the, I mean, the studies are legion. And then I look at the Rockefellers. And, all, and the Bill and Melinda Gates who say, get rid of grandma, uh, euthanize people, e eugenics, forced abortion. But, oh, we want you to take shots to live longer. We care about you. Uh, this is setting a precedent for a very dangerous big pharma uh, group, most of which came right out of Germany and actually funded Hitler. And people study it. I'm not kidding. You can't make this up. He was like their little creation who want medical tyranny to force this on us. I have a uh, Nobel Prize winner. Bertrand Russell wrote repeatedly, we're going to inject people and call them vaccines to brain damage them to make them more, more manageable. I mean, look it up. He says, we're going to change the diet, diet injections and injunctions to, uh, so that the public will be sheep-like compared to the ruling elite. So I've done the study. My film Endgame, Blueprint for Global Enslavement, covers it. This is a premeditated program. You take uh, Bayer Pharmaceutical for 11 years, knew they were shipping HIV, hepatitis, blood to hemophiliacs, and the documents came out, they knew and did it on purpose. You have chemical, biological, radiological testing on foster children, on troops, killing them. So, so who is this in the government that did this, and then when they get caught over the last 60 years, they never get in trouble. They never get in any trouble. They net because listen, my dad was top of his class in high school. As a junior, he was in this advanced program. They called him into the University of Texas, took him behind closed doors, the top testers of 160, I think it was like six of them, and gave them the speech that I'm giving you, but but telling him you're gonna be part of this, okay? And my dad's not that special. If you're in the top of your class in Texas or Al or 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 New Mexico or New York, you're getting this speech today. That's what I'm telling people. This is a giant covert eugenics program. I know your film doesn't get into that. You're wanting it to be, you know, very balanced. I think it's that's why it's the key to get out there. Uh, but any comments on what I'm talking about? Well, first of all, I think I would just comment that I actually am from the system. You know, I went to one of the best universities in the nation, and I got an MBA from the University of Chicago, and I worked at Goldman Sachs for a period of years, and then worked in finance for 13 years, and I witnessed firsthand a lot of um, um, overt and some not so overt corruption. I actually had the CEO of a pharmaceutical company come in and tell me that their blockbuster drug that they were about to release um, was showing that it was causing death in some of the patients it was treating and that the FDA was going to make them put a warning on their packaging because of this. But the good news was they still thought they'd be able to do $7 billion in peak sales. That kind of stuff is not... Um, isolated. It's not unique. It's going on all the time. Um, I think the real issue is, Alex, that the average person doesn't get that, doesn't understand that, and doesn't hasn't connected the dots yet. And so I, you know, I come from a place of wanting to educate people and bring them into the fold as easily as I possibly can. And this is such an emotive issue that if we are too frightening. Um, too frank, um, then I really worry that the message gets lost. And so, you know, I, I have a lot of um, sympathy and uh, appreciation for all of the things that you just said. And um, but I think when it comes to the issue of vaccines, that it's uh, we will do um, much more to further the message and bring more people into the fold to understand that they should want to um, have freedom about what they put in their bodies and to make these choices um, than by being more you know, uh, um, inflammatory, I guess. And given that we are having a huge impact, there was a, a report just last week, maybe the week before, that um, the federal government studied up, um, the vaccination rate in Portland, Oregon, and found that in the last 
five or six years, I forget what the exact period was, but it was in a recent period in the early 2000s that the um, non-vaccinators rose from 2.5% of the population to 9.5% of the population. No, that was in, uh, I think, the Sacramento Bee two days ago. Yeah, and it, it's been all over the place for the last couple of weeks, but this, the place that they studied was Portland, Oregon. And my point is that that, that one city has seen the number of people not vaccinating go from 25 to 9.5%. In the last several years, people are starting to wake up to this. And in order to bring more people in, what we really want to do is change laws. What we really want to do is help is wake people up. What we really want to do is empower people. And we strongly felt as filmmakers that we do that by not beating them over the head, but by helping. No, I agree with you. I, I mean, I agree with you. This is something for the yeah, Joe Schmo out there questioning uh, Leslie Manukian, again, the writer and producer of The Greater Good, available at InfoWarsShop.com or their site, GreaterGoodMovie.org. I can tell you, I've seen the film, great filmmaker for somebody that I hadn't done a lot of media before. I can tell you had a lot of passion for this, and, and it's a labor of love. Uh, what woke you up to this is a good question. Uh, the, well, you know, like I said, I was working on Wall Street for a long time, and I had that experience. I mean, I was... I headed up Alliance Capital's European Growth Portfolio Management business in London for a period of years, and it was my job to interview CEOs of multinational corporations. And um, for many years, I would sort of witness this stuff, but not really. It didn't really hit me until that CEO came in and told me that he was going to do seven billion of peak sales and kill a bunch of people in the process. And I just realized that I was playing for the wrong team. And shortly after that, I met a man in London who told me that vaccines could cause harm. And I literally thought the guy was nuts. I said, you know, you're out of your mind. Vaccines are the greatest invention of humankind. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that these things are great. And he said, listen, that's the one perspective. Read, read this book. And he gave me Neil Miller's book, Vaccines Are They Really Safe and Effective. And I read it extremely skeptical. I'm an analyst by nature. Um, I was super skeptical, but at the end of the book, I went and I looked in the back, and there were over 900 footnotes to peer-reviewed medical literature and mainstream news pieces. And I thought, 900? Over 900 references? Can this be true? Can this be real? I didn't want to believe it, but I committed to myself right then and there, and this was about 11 years ago, that someday I was going to make a movie on this, and I was going to go and do my own research, read the science myself, and go and look these people in the eyes. Look CDC and FDA and vaccine developers and patent holders in the eyes and ask them myself, what's really going on here? And, and, and you've done that, and they look scared when you're talking to them. You've hit a home run, the greater good. Again, get this out to everybody. In a little bit of time we've got left, I want to go back, though, because I'm guessing, because I've had experiences similar to this, where you thought, oh, he's joking, I'm going to make $7 billion and kill a bunch of people. But I've interviewed genetic engineers who are making $3 million a year. They're like, hey, this potato is sterilizing the rats, but we're, we're getting it approved. And, the, and, the, and they're like, yeah, there's too many people. That's, you know, that's really the plan. And then they think it's a joke, but then it gets approved. I mean, do you think he was joking when he said, I'm going to make $7 million and kill people? Or uh, did you go do research and realize it wasn't really a joke? Um, I realized that all that mattered to him was corporate profits and that that is really what is the, the driver of everything in the world today. I mean, I guess I do, I, I've gotten to the point where I recognize that there is no separation between state and the corporate world anymore and that the only way that we are going to change that is if average citizens stand up and hold their ground. And this, this was the first... Um, step for me in that process, making this film to empower people so that they could stand up for themselves, so that they could go to the lobby in California and say, we're not going to support this bill that they've got in front of California now that will require every person to get a vaccine exemption from a authorized medical provider every single year. You know, I just, I, I recognize that this guy was just delusional, but that not just he was delusional, but so were all the other people who were part and parcel of it. Well, were, well listen, uh, Leslie Manukian, You've hit a home run. I want to get you back on the nightly news. We can do uninterrupted, uh, long interview or anybody else you want to invite and get you up on Skype. Great job with the greater good. God bless you. And with people like you out there, we're going to defeat this tyranny because the special interest coming in now, being able to lobby to make us take their products, it's true tyranny. Thank you so much for your work. Thank you so much for having me, Alex. I am so grateful. No, we're grateful to you. A lot of children to save. American gardeners and fellow patriots make the right 
All right, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start going to your phone calls for about 20, 30 minutes for those that have been holding. I want to hear from you, all the interesting points you raise, and then I'll continue back into the latest on Fast and Furious, and it is big. This, this is shaping up. They may actually bring Obama to justice. We'll also get into uh, what's happening with the economy. That's probably the most important area, but the greater good available at InfoWarsShop.com is so important, and hopefully you'll show it to people in your area, put it on Access TV, things like that. Uh, because, uh, you know, it, it's very well produced, made for a mainline audience. Uh, it's not as hardcore as total reality, but people aren't ready for that in many cases. Uh, there's different schools of thought. Slapping folks upside the head seems to work, but whatever. I think this this friendly apo uh, approach is also good. We also have uh, Dreams from My Real Father, Joel Gilbert. This film uh, isn't even out yet, but we're able to sell it before it's out officially. And we're the only folks, by the way, that actually have it in stock. Uh, because it's so hot right now, it's available at InfoWarsShop.com. And your purchase funds, this whole news organization, the radio show, the nightly news, the films, the news websites, everything we're doing and all the new reporters we're hiring. Tomorrow, I'm going to announce the male and female reporter winners and $10,000 in prizes. And you got two more weeks uh, or a week and a half now for phase two, $10,000 in prizes for the Obama dictator contest, hanging up uh, posters in legal lawful areas. Find out more at InfoWars.com. Let's go ahead and go to Chris in Georgia. Thanks for holding. Welcome. What did you think of that last guest? Uh, she was awesome. She was awesome. Um, just first off, I just want to appreciate you for everything you do, man. You're a true patriot. Um, got a quick question for you. I know it's kind of going to be kind of a difficult one to answer, but with things speeding up the way they are, how much longer do you feel like we have before the global globalists are going to implement a full-scale collapse? Well, many areas like Greece and uh, have already collapsed into total bedlam, um, but six months, a year, it, the, the globalists won't do this right away or, or they'll back off a little if they don't think we're going to go along with it. But everywhere where they think they've got their people in place, like Spain and Greece and other areas, they're going to drop the hammer all the way. I mean, they hate the public. They want to impoverish. That's their stated uh, eugenicist uh, post-industrial view. Uh, in fact, I'm going to cover that coming up after calls, but I mean, it's the banks are getting ready. The big mega banks that are just fronts for the private interests that own them, they're getting ready to, to, to bring down the zombie banks. And when that happens, when, when Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and other Ponzi scheme shell corporations uh, are blown, uh, it is going to be, it's going to make, Right now, it's 50-50 that it's going to be road warrior level depression. We're already in a depression, but it's a slow sliding one from recession into depression. And of course, that's on the good side. It is, I mean, now all the main analysts are saying, you better give us everything or we're going to give you a total depression. Well, we've already given them everything, but their plan is the depression. So, I mean, look at this article out of CNBC. Big banks craft living wills in case they fail. And then here's another one, avoiding a global catastrophe. Larry Summers, who helped engineer all this, and he talks about things completely melting down. Well, I mean, it's mathematically impossible unless we write off the trillion, the, the 1.5 quadrillion, 1,500 trillion, even hard to say that number. Unless we write all that off, and unless we explain that's not our debt and arrest all these people, they're going to bring us into total global collapse that they're going to organize and pose as saviors with the prostitute, Decepticon, collaborator, Vichy French media telling us they're the saviors. And it is going to get absolutely hellish with stage terror attacks, new wars. They're going to throw everything at us. They have been massing basically on our border. The New World Order has in every city, every town against us. They are surveilling us. They are trying to create attack forces, death squads, and they are just building up the armored bunkers, the pillboxes, the machine guns, the shotguns, the hollow point ammo, the drones for all out war against us. And let me tell you, <laughs> they're going to get their butts kicked.